What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. This is going to be a very interesting video. You guys are spoiled because I've been posting a lot of swingy cash game sessions where things either go really, really well for me or really, really bad, and that means it's really good entertainment. This one might be a little bit more realistic because I'm fitting two sessions into one, and you're going to find out why. But this first one playing at Cherokee, I think it's a 10-25 game, maybe a 5-10 game. I forget the stakes to be quite honest with you. It's been quite a bit, but I'm going to hop in there. It's uncapped. I know that for sure. And it's, uh, well, you'll, you'll find out why there's going to be two sessions, a little bit more realistic of cash game videos and trying to navigate recording in public and trying to get away with it. That's all I got to say. Let's hop into the cash session. Let's check out Cherokee's North Carolina's 5-10-20 game here at Harris. There's no max buying, so I'm in for $20,000. And let's dive into the first hand with ace-queen offsuit in the big line. $20 straddle is on and action folds to me, basically up against the straddle. I raise it up to $80 and the straddler makes the call. Going to a flop of 10-4-3 rainbow sitting with ace-queen high. Overall, a board that I think I won't connect on too much. I start off with the check with ace-queen, and this opponent checks it back. Now to a turn, which is the 10 of clubs. It brings in a backdoor flush draw, and I check once again. And now he decides to bet out $75. Thinking that this action is pretty strange, assuming a 10 would have bet on the flop, and sitting with some showdown value, I decide to make the call for $75. Let's get in here and battle it out. Now going to a river, which is the eight of spades. I check once again, don't think betting makes a whole lot of sense. And for a second time, this opponent blasts out $175. Upon this bet, I recheck my cards and I'm holding the ace of clubs. And I think he shouldn't be bluffing with a ton of ace of clubs anyways. But like I said, for the same reasons why I called on the turn, I think ace queen high has some showdown and him betting so big just doesn't make a lot of sense. Don't think a four or a three is going to be betting out so big. So I'm curious the first hand into the session. Let's see what he's doing this with. I make the call and this opponent mucks. All right, seems like he didn't want to show his bluff and I'm going to take this first hand down. What a solid start. Following that hand, picking up a fun one, ace three of hearts in the big blind. There's a hijack raise to $60. The button makes the call who has a pretty big sack of about 15,000 and now out of position against this player, thinking that it's a pretty decent spot to squeeze, so I go for it. I three bet to $300 here, five X the original open. And when the hijack player folds, but the button player actually makes the call, Pretty surprising to see that action. Who knows what he's doing here, double calling preflop, but here we are playing very deep. Out of position, the flop comes 10-9-7 rainbow. Not a whole lot going for me, and I think this is a board that's going to favor this button player so much as middling card should favor someone's calling range potentially. I'm gonna check this one with a whole lot of nothing and my opponent checks back. Now going to a turn which comes the ace of clubs, banking top pair, there's also a backdoor flush draw as well. Not sure whether I want to bet or check here, but out of position, definitely leaning towards the passive side. I decide to check, and my opponent once again checks. Now, going to a river, not a whole lot of action here. It is the five of hearts, and action is just going to go check, check here on this river. Not sure if I'm allowed to even bet too big on this board, unfortunately, and when I show my ace, it's going to win, so not a terrible result winning this one. Looks like I'm winning two hands in a row. Let's make it a third. I pick up ace queen offsuit once again on the button. There's a cutoff raise to $50 on my right and facing this raise here, playing a little shorthanded at this point of the night. I decide to three bet to $200 with a decent hand and my opponent makes the call. So playing in position this time, finally, we're going to a flop of 10, nine, five, all spades. Uh, this is really not the best board overall for me once again and when my opponent checks, deciding whether I want to check or bet here without a spade in my hand, I'm always leaning towards the aggressive route and decide to throw out $125 into the middle. And for $125, my opponent makes the call. So we're going to a turn which brings the ace of spades. That's cool. I have top pair, obviously four to a flush, a little bit uncomfortable, so for those reasons, I decide to check this one back. Now going to a river, which is the eight of clubs, and my opponent decides to bet here, but it's a pretty wild amount. It's a bet of $65. 
Oh my God. This pot has clearly ballooned up facing basically a 10% bet just seems way too good of a price to fold, but I have seen this opponent go for very, very thin value here. Can't imagine he's bluffing for a 10% pot bet, but whatever, uh, I'm basically just gonna call. I put $65 directly into his stack and he shows us the 10-9 of diamonds flopping top two pair and finding a way to get paid. That's impressive, gotta love that one. Recently, I just got an alert that I got pinged that my login credentials were found on the dark web. And I know of this is because of today's sponsor, Aura. You may or may not have heard of Aura before, but it's the app that I use to protect my data from hackers, spammers, and scammers. Are you doing anything to protect yourself? If the answer is nothing, then I highly recommend Aura, and here's how it works. Aura continuously monitors the dark web, looking for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers, and sends alerts fast to your phone or email when they find anything. Aura also gives you real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, like if someone was trying to open a loan or credit card in your name. They automatically send requests on your behalf to data brokers to remove the information, helping to reduce the amount of spam and robocalls you receive. On top of all that, their VPN allows you to stay anonymous by keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted. And they have antivirus software that will block malware and viruses before they infect your devices. Identity theft is so common and there's a new victim every 14 seconds, and it costs the average victim over $1,000. So protect your family and yourself from identity theft at www.aura.com slash rampage. Also, click the link in the description below for more information. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two-week free trial with my link so you can see for yourself how many times Aura finds you or your family members' personal information on the dark web. And lastly, if you sign up today, let me know in the comments below if your personal information has been compromised. You certainly won't regret checking. Shout out to Aura for sponsoring this video. All right, this next spot is a pretty big one and interesting one, so let's dive in. I have ace-10 offsuit on the button. There's a hijack limp to $20, the cutoff raises to $100, and me next to act, I decided to just make the call here and everyone else fold. So definitely thought that there might be merit to three betting this one, but on the button, I'm happy to call. We're off to a flop, which comes 10-6 deuce to hearts. Pretty fun flop overall, top pair, top kicker, along with the ace of hearts. This opponent checks here, and now on this board that I'm going to love, I decided to bet out $180, sizing pretty big, expecting him to potentially have over pairs here that might want to check on this flop, but when my opponent doesn't check raise, I feel pretty good. He only makes the call. Now off to a turn which comes a bank 10. Improved two trips, certainly confident. I have the best hand for sure in this spot. My opponent checks once again, and let's just get some more money into the middle. Trying to build the pot up with the effective nuts. I size way up here as I think I would also do so with bluffs. I throw it a bet of 650. And my opponent doesn't snap fold, which is amazing news to see. He takes his time and then ends up calling. Here we go, big pot is brewing hoping he has an over pair that wouldn't be able to fold for, to another big bet on the river. And I don't think he's gonna have too many flush draws now given the nature of a paired board and me holding ace of hearts. We're off to a river which comes the queen of hearts. Crap. I lose to all flushes now and he certainly can have a lot of pocket queens as played potentially. So I obviously don't love this card. He checks for a third time as expected, and I'm definitely betting here, but it's simply just a decision of how big do I want to go. My hand is simply too strong to just check back, obviously, with trips and top kicker, and I can still get a lot of value from jacks and kings and, I guess, sometimes aces. So for those reasons, I decided to bet out $700. I wish I was able to bet a little bit bigger if the flush didn't get through, but issue is that if I face a check jam, then I simply puke. But luckily, when I bet, and after some time, my opponent motions his body in such a way where it's obvious he's not going to raise. That's a very good feeling to have as I'm just praying for a call, hoping to just win a bunch of chips from this pot. And when he flicks in an orange chip for a call, I show my hand and win. Pretty sick spot here with trips and even better, turns out this bad queen ended up being a good one as he tells me he had queen six. So I guess it was a really good river, even though it was a heart, and nice to scoop a decent sized pot here. For one of the last interesting hands of this specific session, the game's been pretty tame and quiet so far besides that last hand. I pick up ace three offsuit in the cutoff, raise it up to $60 here, and I get the small one to call on a short stack. This opponent looks like he's taking a shot in the 5, 10, 20 game with a few hundred in front of him. So expecting him to play a tight range, we're off to a flop, which comes jack eight deuce to hearts. 
he checks it over to me here, sitting with a whole lot of nothing besides ace high. I decided to check this one back. Now going to a turn, which comes a deuce. Board is paired, doesn't change anything, and he bets out $100. And I think at this point, I have some runouts that I would like to bluff on, I guess. I don't know. I'm just trying to battle in here. The session's in pretty tame. I'm trying to get involved in as many spots as possible. So I make the call for $100. And we're off to a river, which comes a queen. Card over the jack, and my opponent checks and slows down. And when I see him check and slowing down, it seems like a green light to blast away. Not expecting ace high to be good, but I certainly can put a lot of pressure on a jack or a pair of eights. So I bet out $275 here, hoping for a fold, and he quickly does. Nice to take this one, nice for the bluff to get through, and that's going to end my experience in this game here. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of action, besides the big hand that we won, the ace-10 off. I'm out, man. Uh, maybe this will be a, a two-part, two-session video, but that was one of the worst games I've ever played in. Uh, played for like two and a half, three hours of just not fun hands. I wish I could show you guys something interesting, you know? It would have been a really lame video if I just showed you what actually was going on. A few friends are getting drinks right now, and I think I'd be a lot happier if I did that. So we'll go over the numbers. I won small. Like, it's not a lot. I was in the game for 20300 out of the game for $22,018. I'll take it uh, for a couple hours, but really, that was a painful game. I'm going to go have some fun with friends and get drinks and, rest and uh, probably restart or play another session to finish this video, hopefully tomorrow. What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a fantastic day back here in Tampa. It's, uh, it's a fun time. What's fun about specifically today is that the Andrew and Brad meetup game was earlier. I was playing a tournament, so I wasn't able to play into the official meetup game, but there are some stragglers who wanted to play a 510. It's currently midnight. I don't know how long we're gonna play for, but uh, just playing in a fun little 510 game, that's all I got. <laughs> I'm really tired. Had a few drinks in me and ready to splash, ready to have a good time. But I'm bringing you guys along because when you're in Tampa and you pay a lot of money for a room here at the Hard Rock, you just try to make, take as much advantage of staying here as much as possible. So 510, I'm buying you for 3,000. Wish me luck. Hard Rock Tampa 510. $3,000 to start, and here we are with ace-10 of clubs in the big line. There's a cutoff player who straddles to $20 and then a $40 double straddle beyond that. So here we are starting things off. The small blind starts off by calling and limping for $40. Action folds around to me. I'm next to act in the big blind, and I decide to raise this premium up to $200. Only the button player makes the call, so isolated the field. Weird pre-flop action here, but let's get into it. The flop comes deuce, four, five, one, club. Here, I'm out of position against the button player. I have two over cards, a gut shot straight draw, I check. My opponent checks this one back, so it doesn't seem like he connected with the board too much. We're going to a turn which comes the seven of spades. I check once again with just ace high, and my opponent bets out $175. You know, I'm always curious when it's early on in these sessions here, and I just don't think his story is making a whole lot of sense right now. If he had a strong hand, why would he want to check the flop? And if he hit a seven, then I certainly have a lot of equity against that hand, and I just don't really believe him so far. So definitely feeling like my hand is good, or at least has good enough equity, I make the call for 175, and we're going to a river which comes another seven. Pretty cool spot now as all of the holdings for value I think he had has now diminished. And I check again, Trish trying to get to showdown, but my opponent decides to bet out $500 with about 800 behind. And I'm not sure if I'm able to check raise as a bluff here at all. If I check jam, just don't think that he has too much behind to fold any value hand. And I think my ace high serves purely as a bluff catcher or, you know, I could always fold, but uh, I'm speaking about this for so long. You know where my mind's headed at. I think the seven reduces the number of combinations of value my opponent can have and I go for it. Non-believing, I make the call and he says that I am good with ace high. I show it. I win. It's a great start to the session. And later on, I heard him say he had king queen this specific hand. So good bluff attempt there. Just unfortunate you ran into someone who is incapable of folding. This next hand we're going to go over is just bananas. The player on the button says that if everyone were to straddle over to him, he's just going to go all in blind for like $1,000 and 
This is clearly not an opportunity I can pass up, so we do it. The 20, 40, 80, I'm on the yellow straddle, is on. Then the player on my left, and the cutoff does the 160. And as promised, the button goes all in for $1,055 total. This is all before the cards even get dealt. Action's gonna fold around to the $40 straddler to my right, and uh, he looks at his hands and calls the all-in of $1,000. If there was any time to peel a premium, it's gonna be this one. Come on, I see 10-3 off. All right, gonna practice some discipline here. Kiss $80 goodbye and let this one go. Player to my left uh, announces YOLO because he's closing out the action. He hasn't even looked at his cards yet and ends up calling blind. This is a three-way all-in. Two of the players has called blind, one player has looked. The button has nine deuce off suit. And when the reno comes, nine deuce has a pair. And somehow, after all of this madness, the cutoff and player to my right both had king queen. And just like that, nine deuce off suit triples the hell up. Very, very incredible hand. I had to report it. And welcome to a very fun 510 game late at night. It's officially DGen hours. Oh. Following that hand, I pick up seven deuce off suit in the cutoff. And once again, another scenario where I'm the only one playing this game in my head, but whatever. I raise it up to $30 and get the button, small blind, and big blind to call. Now going multi-way, the flop is ace, seven, six. So really not a bad board with seven deuce. I mean, when you flop a pair, you gotta feel pretty decent. So I decided to bet out $35. It's kind of protect my pair and hopefully win this one. But when the player to my left makes the call, we're off to see a turn heads up, which is a bink seven of a hearts. Oh my God. How does that even happen? Improving to trips now, definitely going to go for value and I'm just praying my opponent has an ace. I bet out $110, let's get some value here out of this hand. And for 110, he makes the call. So pretty dream scenario brewing right now. I have a hand that I should never be playing, but it's a very strong one. We're going to a river, which is the king of diamonds. Basically a brick, all the flush draws have missed. And I'm gonna size up for value here once again. I just don't think my opponent is capable of folding an ace, especially now the king came. So any ace has the same kicker basically. I bet out $375, but bad news. My opponent looked like he only had a spade draw. So no value there. Missed flush draw is not going to pay me off. And it's just really not fair to be honest to raise a hand like this and actually make such a strong hand. But after this seven deuce hand, unfortunately, the floor gets called. I, I get bopped for recording, I guess, and GG's to the end of this session. I have more thoughts in detail in the outro. All right, it's uh, about 2 a.m. in the morning. I was able to play some poker for at least an hour and a half until it all came crashing down. Not because I lost or whatever, but just a common theme in Florida, like I just, can't fucking do anything. I just like don't have permission to record, film. It's just always so annoying. There's always a really fun table, fun group. It's just, it's always annoying. So yeah, of course the floor comes over, tells me to stop recording. And at that point, like I'm kind of over to the whole uh, playing poker situation for tonight. So, you know, like my, my motto has always been why play cash games if I can't make videos of it. And, you know, kind of ruins the mood and vibe for me. So there's that. Uh, I guess the only good news, I did end up winning a little bit, uh, albeit like I'm not really playing for the money and playing for a good time, make content for you guys, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's always nice to book a small win, even though I only played for about an hour and a half. Uh, I was in the game for three thousand dollars, out of the game, out of the five ten for three thousand eight hundred and fifty seven exactly, which is solid. But I'm just a little frustrated. Uh, about the, the struggles, continued struggles everywhere I go to. For some reason, I just can't film, can't make content, and that's really all I want to do. That's it. Anyways, the floor was really nice. He, he was really understanding. He handled it fine. He's just doing his job. It's just uh, always frustrating on my side. Every time I come to Florida, I either get kicked out or get told to stop filming this and that. And it gets old after uh, the 20th time trying to get away and fly under the radar. I guess I can't fly under the radar anymore. But that is that. Still, uh, we'll see if I can make any more videos here from Tampa. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Appreciate you guys for watching these videos. It means a lot. I would never be here, to be honest, without you guys watching the videos. I would never be in Cherokee. I would never be traveling anywhere without it. So I owe you guys everything. 
and I just want to provide content for you guys. But thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. It's always nice to book a win. Glad you guys had some entertainment because it was a really fun session. See you next time. Peace.